Hey everyone, and welcome back to building our bubble app. Um, one thing I noticed that I didn't talk about last time is if I resize the screen, the actual um, group focus will get out of alignment. And we could fix that relatively easily with just clicking on here and selecting make the group focus itself fixed width. Uh, so go ahead and do that. And if you want to add a little bit of tang to your design, you can add these two conditions, which you can pause and figure out. Um, and you can add those so that it actually looks just a touch better. So that when the menu drops down, this one becomes the same color as this header. And when you navigate away, it uh, doesn't. Okay. And this little arrow becomes a pop-up arrow. Okay. So without further ado, our, our, our design works quite well, except when we go into mobile. Like, let's say we're looking at it on an iPhone, iPhone 10 or X, XS. You'll notice that this takes up a lot of the screen real estate, and this no longer becomes a viable option for us to um, scroll through the content because it's so huge. And what we want is just to keep it at 60 pixels right here. So what we need is an actual mobile um, menu with breakpoints. And if you look at some famous uh, websites, you'll notice that they also have breakpoints, referring to the content that's in the header will actually change based on the width of the screen. If you look at it here, YouTube, um, the search bar becomes very small, and then all of a sudden, boop, the search bar becomes a search icon that you have to click on, and then you can click back. Um, another one is Insta. The search bar does the same thing, and then it becomes uh, nothing. You don't have a search bar anymore. And if you look at eBay and even Amazon, um, they had, back in the day, a way to make it until a certain width for desktop. And if you're logging in with a mobile device, then they'll show you a different site altogether. Um, I think in 2019, it's better to build out the whole thing based on um, fully responsive. And that's what we're going to be doing. And keep in mind that even a world-class app like Instagram uh, still, have, still has some small features that don't necessarily, uh, that aren't necessarily fully responsive. So uh, also uh, an interesting thing to look at is the Spotify, which will uh, collapse into a smaller menu like this. So fully responsive with no scrolling on the site at all. Uh, I mean, horizontal scrolling is what we're going to try to do today. So the first thing we're going to do is get the group focus out of the way, and we're going to elongate this group um, so that we can work inside of it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a holder group that will hold all of the stuff that we've built out so far. So we'll grab this, select first parent. Uh, so we grab its parent group, and then we'll hold down shift, grab option one, option two, and this, and store it inside this group. You'll see the red, uh, you'll see it light up red uh, when it's about to become the parent, and then we're going to just drop it in there. We're also going to select this image's parent and make sure that uh, the X is okay, zero. So then we have to move this over one pixel. So 150, I made a mistake already, 150. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing here and move this over to 250. And then we're going to make sure that this one actually just sits on the right. Um, we're going to grab this group since the Y was one, and we're gonna drag it down until it's constrained. And we're gonna drag this all the way up. And then we're going to drag this all the way up. So now we have a group. The next thing we're going to do is change this color to the background, and we're going to change the this color to nothing, uh, the color of the group focus. And we're going to store this right on top. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say collapse this element when hidden and make it invisible on page load. Why are you breaking everything, you may ask? Well, it's because we're going to rebuild it. And we're going to say when page width is wider than a certain point, then this element will be visible. Now, how do we pick which point we want that to happen at? Well, if you click on the responsive tab, you'll have a number of settings um, that are presets and 768 is good for tablets. Uh, anything over 1200 is good for laptops and desktops and anything under, under about 420, they say uh, 375, but anything under about 420 for the larger phones is good for phones. Really, really good websites uh, will have three breakpoints or more um, and you can add as many as you want. Just the more breakpoints you add, the harder it is to keep up with your design. So for the purposes of this tutorial and for creating a minimum viable product, which I assume is what you're doing and not a production product, we're going to have one breakpoint and it's only going to be 768. So in the responsive tab here, you can actually 
um, use your little dragging mouse thing. I can't talk right now. Your little mouse thing to uh, pick different sizes and see how your design will show up. And you'll notice that these are breaking to the next line because Bubble thinks there's no more room for them. Um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that this doesn't actually snap down ever until 768, right? So if I go here, 768, it does because these options are not aligned properly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this image. We're going to select its parent and we're going to say, you're always going to stick to the left instead of sticking centered. And if we do the same for option one and do the same for option two, it will eliminate the margin on the left and it will allow all of this to, to stay white space and automatically when we built this one, Bubble assumed it was going to stick right, and that's exactly what we want. So this one sticks right, and the other two work, until right here at actually 460 pixels, where it has to pop down. And since our breakpoint is 768, and this will change at that breakpoint, we should be A-OK -okay to just continue. Um, so let's go back to our UI builder, and you'll notice that it's disappeared. We have to click on it, eh, and say bigger than 768. There you go. There you have it. So now anytime the page width is bigger than 768, this one will show up. Holding down control and dragging down, we're going to create our mobile option. We don't need option two in mobile and we don't need this right here. So you can go ahead and delete that, but we will keep the logo because why wouldn't we? Let's grab the group and holding down control and shift. Let's make a square. Let's move that square all the way to the top right, holding down shift. Let's drag it out and let's make sure that it stayed square. It didn't. It took a pixel from somewhere. I don't know where. It doesn't matter. Let's apply the style of header button to this one here. Let's grab an ionic icon and let's put it inside. And the bigger your ionic icon, the more cartoony and the cuter. I think if you type in menu, you can grab the hamburger menu, center horizontally and center vertically. The smaller your icon, the more professional I think it looks. So you can go ahead and pick a size for your icon. And right here, we're going to actually duplicate it by holding down control, dragging out, picking close, and picking this X right here. Unfortunately, I forgot to give it a acceptable color. And there you have it. So now, when this group, when the page width is less than, less or equal to 768, this element will be visible. And now you have two menus. You have a mobile one, and you have a... Oops... Did I already do this? I didn't want to have already done this. So now you have a wide group, and when I make the page smaller, you actually have a mobile menu after 768. Now let's fix that up because it's currently ugly and doesn't work. Group L, we're going to call it um, Hamburger. And Hamburger is, the, they call this a hamburger menu. I just like the way, um, and close. I just like the way Hamburger sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and say that if nobody minds. 1140 right here, and we're going to basically have them sit one on top of the other. Let's go ahead and say not visible on page load and not visible on page load. And let's go conditional when page width. We're going to apply the same condition right here is larger than 700. So smaller or whoops. Ahem. Ahem. Everything's good. Smaller or equal to 768, then this element is visible true. But we actually have another condition to add because when we, we, we want to click on it and then we want this menu to open uh, select first parent we want the menu to open and the menu will live just underneath there so let's go ahead and create that menu with a group this group we can drag out we can give it a height of 40 and we can give it an x of zero and a y of whatever the hell this is perfect looks like 120 I should have been able to guess that. And inside, we're going to put a repeating group, and this repeating group will follow the exact same procedure as we did for whatever was in the group focus. If you remember for this menu, well, this menu is going to follow the same procedure. Since we set up our menu options, we can do a search for menu options, and then we can go ahead and load only one row and no separators, and we can say full list so that it loads all of our menu options. Inside this repeating group, we can put another group, beauty. And this group will just be there so that when we hover over top of it, uh, the background color will be cool. Is hovered. We're going to set, change the background color to be um, this. And then we're going to here make this fully transparent. And sorry, we still want to... Oh, no, we don't want to maintain transparency. 
and then text. And I don't know if you remember how we did this, but we were sending out menu options from current cells menu options. And now we could say insert dynamic data parent groups menu options name is going to appear here. We'll make this the full width of the um, group and we'll remove this style, make it centered and make it 18. And we're going to give it a color of this. Why not? Exactly, center vertically. And if you if you set up your color palette like this, it's really easy to just get right in there and start designing. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select, we're going to hide this, sorry. We're going to select the group that's its parent. That's the RG's parent. And we're going to say collapse this element when the, collapse this, this element's height when hidden. And that'll make sure that this header doesn't actually become too big and stay over content, even though this is hidden. And then we're going to make it invisible on page load. Okay, so now this group is, should be hidden and the header shouldn't take up any room. And uh, when we show it, we should be able to see all of the menu's options. So when we click on this button, which is now hidden for Hamburger, we can have a workflow that says here, I'm in actions, show, and we can say whatever group is holding the RG and the group is called N, and we're actually gonna call it RG hold. RG is for repeating group, by the way. You'll see that a lot in the future. So our repeating group is managed by RG hold now. Oh yeah, another thing is we want a flat color, sure, but we wanted this color, nay, this color. And we were using a blue that was just a little bit off blue, and we want it to be a little bit transparent. So let's go back into our um, Hamburger, and let's say show an element RG hold. Perfect. And the second thing we want to do is when I click close, I want to hide RG hold. Hide RG hold. Perfect. And the next thing is this element is not visible on page load, but this one is. So we want close to be visible when. Uh, RG hold is visible. And we want Hamburger to be visible when, well, this is a parent, so it inherits it. Let's remove this condition. When RG hold isn't visible, then this element is visible. Okay, so they're just opposing conditions for the two groups. When RG hold is visible, this element is visible. And when RG hold isn't visible, the hamburger is visible. I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and preview and try it. So now we have our regular menu. Let's make the screen small. Let's click on here. Here's our RG hold and let's close it again. Perfect, except that it's not aligning correctly because if you remember, we have to go into the responsive, click on here and say align right and then show the close menu and say align right as well. And then we're all set and we're all good to go. Here is our thing. And then we're going to hide this thing and it's going to collapse its height so that this one can replace it. Now, this one doesn't yet have, um, there's no content, so you can't see, but the group is actually right at the blue line here is where it ends. Click on here and the group expands to include all of your options. Cool. Let's go ahead and show option two, just to give you uh, option one, just to give you some context. Here's some gray. Everything is working. Let's press control shift M in our Firefox so that we can load iPhone X. And here's a mobile phone. You can see you're scrolling and then you wanna see the menu. Here's the menu. And you can still scroll, um, but your menu options are available to you. And then you can click on each of these to navigate, right? Cool, cool. Last thing we wanna do before we move on is in the workflow, hide RG hold. And um, we wanna copy this. And we wanna add a workflow to our menu option. We wanna say, Start edit workflow, paste this, and then paste whatever we had for go to page index in the other menu options. So here we're hiding group focus A and going to the page. Here we're going to hide RG hold very similarly and go to the page. Index P current cells, it all works the same. So now it should actually work right out of the box. I should be able to go to option one and option two directly from my, here's option one, and here's option two. And now you've built yourself a mobile friendly navigation menu. But what about the different options that you want to show here or not show here? That's going to be for the next tutorial.